Hello everyone, welcome to the Science Stuff. Today, we are going to be learning about the structure of a bisexual flower. In this video, we will cover the topics of the worlds of a flower, complete and incomplete flowers, bracts, nectaries, sexualities in flowers and more. So what part does a flower play in a plant? The flower is the reproductive organ of the plant. And it is also usually the most beautiful part of the plant. The flower develops from a bud and goes on to become a fruit. We can say that flowers are the most complex and advanced structures in flowering plants. Now, let's look at the structure of a bisexual flower. The stalk supports the flower and some flowers do not have a stalk. So in this figure, this will be the stalk of the flower. The tip of the stalk may also be enlarged to form a cup-shaped thalamus or a receptacle, as shown here. The floral parts emerge from the thalamus into four whorls. The first whorl. The first whorl consists of the green sepals and is collectively called the calyx. They protect the inner whorls in bud condition. These are the sepals in this picture. The second whorl. This whorl consists of the showy petals and it is collectively known as the corolla. These yellow structures are the petals and together they form the corolla. The third whorl. This whorl consists of the male parts of the flower, namely the stamen. The stamen consists of long thread-like structures projecting out called as filaments. The filaments end with a bilobed tip known as the anther. The male part of the flower is collectively called the androsium. So let's look at what the anther and the filaments are in this picture of a lily. So here these thread-like structures will be the filaments while these structures will be the anthers. Now let's look at the fourth whorl. This whorl consists of the female parts of the flower, namely the pistil, that may be formed of a single carpel or a group of fused carpels. Each carpel consists of an ovary at the base, a middle style and an uppermost stigma. The female part of the flower is collectively called the gynosium. So in this picture of a lily here, this top part will be known as a stigma and this long tube-like structure in the middle will be known as a style and we cannot see the ovary but it will be there. Now let's look at the structure of a bisexual flower. As we can see the ovary is right below the style. Inside the ovary there will be small small structures known as ovules. And these ovules will become the seed when the flower matures. Another interesting thing to notice from this is the bilobed structure of the anthers. These anthers contain the pollen grains that will take part in pollination. Now let's look at the non-essential and the essential worlds of the flowers. So the first two worlds, the calyx and the corolla, are the non-essential or accessory worlds and the androsium and the gynosium, the third and the fourth worlds are the essential worlds. So why do we use the term essential? By essential, we mean that they take a direct part in the reproduction of the flower, while the calyx in the corolla, the petals and the sepals do not. Now let's look at another topic, the complete and the incomplete flowers. So what is a complete flower? A complete flower or a perfect flower is a flower that has all four of its worlds. If one or more of the worlds is missing, then it is called an incomplete or imperfect flower. Here, as you can see the picture of a hibiscus, we can see that it has these small pollen grains or the anthers and these small stigmas. And we can also see the petals. So it has the androsium, the gynosium, and the corolla and we cannot see it but I can assure you it does have the calyx. Now let's look at the papaya flower. 
here we can see that it has the corolla and the androsium but this particular flower does not have a pistil so this will be an incomplete flower and this will be a complete flower now let's learn more about flowers in some flowers the sepals and petals look very similar and cannot be differentiated in such cases they can be called as tepals tepals are collectively known as a perianth when the perianth is green like the sepals it is called a sepaloid perianth and when the perianth is not green it is described as a petaloid perianth in the given figure these structures cannot be definitely called as either a petal or a sepal hence they are called as tepals so what are bracts bracts are modified leaf like structures often positioned beneath a flower they can be green like ordinary leaves or colored in some flowers they are often confused with petals so let's look at these three examples i have here so the first thing is a mock orange flower so these white structures look very much like petals right but no they are not petals they are in fact the bracts and the flowers are found inside here you can see there are many tiny flowers now let's move on to this bogen villa so in the bogen villa these purple structures also resemble petals but in fact they are not they are bracts the actual flowers are present inside them a third example is the arum lily here we can see that this white outer structure looks like its petal but in fact it is a bract and the small finger like projection here this contains the small tiny flowers let's look at nectaries so what are nectaries nectaries are a group of nectar producing cells that are usually present at the base of the pistil or the base of the petals they produce the sweet fragrant liquid known as nectar the nectar attracts insects like bees and butterflies for pollination so in this flower we can see that the nectar is present right below the ovaries and above the pedicel now let's look at the sexuality in flowers a flower which has both the stamens and the pistils is known as a bisexual or a hermaphrodite flower the word hermaphrodite is derived from the name of the greek god hermaphroditus he was the child of hermes and aphrodite hermaphroditus was not truly a male or a female hence his name was derived now let's look at some other sexes of a flower a flower which has only one of the sex organs is known as a unisexual flower or an incomplete flower a unisexual flower which contains only the stamens is called a male or a staminate flower a flower which contains only carpels or pistils is called a female or a pistillate flower both pistillate and staminate flowers are a type of unisexual flowers now what are neuter flowers a flower which lacks both male and female reproductive organs is known as a neuter flower the ray florets of a sunflower is a good example of a neuter flower this is because even though they have pistils the pistils are sterile we have come to the end of this video thank you so much for watching this video and if you have learned something new please like share and subscribe and comment down below on what topic you want me to do next and you're watching the science stuff